Once you've created a mobile service for an app, the next thing you'll probably need to do is add some table permissions and authentication. To do this, go to your mobile service table and under permissions, change the insert permission so only authenticated users can insert a new record. Save those changes. What that means for our application is that only once you sign in can you add a to-do item. For authentication, I'm going to use Twitter. You'll need to have a Twitter account. And go into apps.twitter.com. And once you've signed in, you can create a new app. You'll have to give your app a name and a description. You can use the same value as long as it's over 10 characters long. And then you'll need to get your website and call back URL details. And to do that, you can jump back to your Azure mobile service dashboard. And you'll see the mobile service URL on the right hand side. Just copy that link. And paste that into your website and call back URL fields. You'll have to read through the terms, agree to them, and then you can create your Twitter application. There's one more thing to do. You will need to go to your settings tab. And just under callback URL, you'll see a checkbox. Allow this application to be used to sign out of Twitter. You just want to tick that box. And then scroll down and update the settings. So this is going to create our Twitter application. You just want to review, make sure everything's done. Sometimes you have to tick the box again and update just to make sure. Once that's saved successfully, you can then use your API keys. And the two values you want here is the API key and the API secret. And I'll show you where to, those go in Azure. So go to your mobile service and under identity, you can see that it supports various identities. You can use your Microsoft account, Facebook, Twitter that we've just set up, Google, and Azure Active Directory. And you'll see that each one has a key and a secret. So they all pretty much work in the same way. So I'm going to do Twitter for now. I'm going to copy my API key from my Twitter app and paste that into my Azure portal. And I'm going to do the same for my API secret. Copy and paste and save those changes. And that's everything set up, ready to go. Now at this stage, it's a good idea to test our table permissions. So you want to try and add or attempt to add a new to-do item. Of course, it shouldn't work. You should get an error telling you you're unauthorized. And this shows that our permission has worked. We've set the insert permission to only allow authenticated users. So I'm going to have to edit the code slightly here and authenticate the user before we try and do anything. So I'm going to cut out the text just below the mobile service client. And I'm going to paste that into a new method. I'm going to call it create table. Just paste that in. And in its place, I'm going to create a new method called authenticate. That's going to enable our user to sign in first. And just call that. And then using our mobile service client, I'm going to call the login method. I'm going to 
use the Twitter mobile service authentication provider. And I'm going to call a new user authentication callback. It's going to generate a uncompleted stub for me to use. So once our user signed in, I can check to see if all has went well or not. So I'm going to see if there's an exception. And if there's no exception, or exception equals null, then all has went well. Our user has signed in, and all is good. Otherwise, we're going to have to display some sort of error and allow our user to sign in again. I'm just going to display some sort of toast alert to notify the user that there was an error. And we have a convenient method called create and show dialog, which generates a toast dialog for us. So I'm just going to say error, please sign in. And if our user has signed in, then I'm going to just proceed and call the create table method. I might also want to display some user information and just say that we've signed in OK. And I'm going to use a string format here to make my dialog look pretty. So you are signed in. And I can escape the string using percent %s. And I'm going to show the ID of the user. So I'm going to use mobile service user get user ID. And that's it. So I can build and run my application now. I'm just going to speed this up a little because it takes some time to boot up the emulator. All right. So our app has loaded up and it's going to show us the Twitter web view. I can sign in. I just, I'm going to tick the box to remember me because I don't like to type in my username password every time. So go ahead and enter your username and password and sign in. That's going to sign us in using our Twitter account and I'm going to get the call back. It's going to tell me you're signed in and it'll show me my Twitter ID. And now I should be able to add a to do item. And there it is, added to my list of to dos. And I can see how that looks on the Azure portal. So if I go to my data and browse my to do item table, I'll, I can see my items added in. And one thing at the minute I'm not storing is the user ID. So I want to store the user ID so I can get the list of to-do items that belong to that user. And I can add that in either in the app client or else I can use a server-side script. It's obviously a lot easier and gives you a nice way of, of doing it using the server-side insert operation. And you have a number of um, properties here to use. You've got item, user, and request. And the item is really the package that is going to be inserted into our table. So I'm going to take that item and add a user ID property to it. And I'm going to set that to equal the user ID that's sent up as well under the user parameter. So I can save that.
And then I can jump back to my application and test that out. So just add a to-do item. That should show up on my list and I can also view that in the Azure portal. And there it is. And I can see that that item has been added in and it has dynamically added in the user ID column and given me my Twitter username. You'll also notice that there's two null user IDs, which are the ones that we've added in earlier. And these also appear in my to-do items. So what I might like to do next is only show my own to-do items. And there's a very easy way of doing that, again, using the server-side scripts. I can go and edit the read operation. And I'm going to run aware on the query. And the way this works is using a JavaScript object or JSON format. I'm going to say the key as user ID and the value is user dot user ID. So anywhere where the user ID is equal to me, it's going to grab all those to do items and show them. So now when I refresh, I should have the null to do item disappear, which is the first one there on the list. That should now be removed from the list because it doesn't belong to me. And the server is only going to pass down the to-do items that belong to me. And there you go. So that concludes this tutorial. In the next part, I'm going to look at sending push notifications using Google Cloud Messenger.